Welcome back. I'd like to take a few minutes here and show you kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of different things that ProSelect can do. But what I want to do is I want to take you through some of the key things that we need to do when we're working with a client in terms of editing the images, um, how we're going to actually we're going to go through a little bit more on ordering images, zooming, cropping, uh, different things like that. We're going to talk about ordering digital files, how you can order digital files in uh, ProSelect, and how everything is going to come together now. We're going to pull that whole order together when we get it back into the final production, put finished logos, copyright information, all right in our files so everything's ready to go to the lab and ready to be delivered to customers. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at the uh, images here. As you can see, I've got everything loaded. I brought uh, all of my imported, all of my images in here. Um, I want to go ahead and we're going to take it and I want to show you about Studio Cloud. Now if we go to Preferences and we go to, into our integration here, um, what we can do is this is where we can enable our Studio Cloud management. Now Studio Cloud uh, has a direct integration with ProSelect, so it's a, it's a great studio management software. Uh, it's not our product. Go to StudioCloud.com to find out more information about it. But what you can do is it's going to make the two programs talk. ProSelect does interact with other studio management programs, but not to the same fantastic degree that it does with Studio Cloud. Uh, so what this is going to do here is by setting this up, we're able to send all of our sales data from here right into Studio Cloud so that we can track it and, and link it right all directly to our clients. We can also bring our client information right into ProSelect. I'm going to show you how that works too. So that integration there is where we're going to set up. We set our business ID, our password information, and we go ahead and save it. And that sets it up to get us ready for Studio Cloud. Now I want to go ahead and I'm going to link this particular album to Studio Cloud. So we're going to go to there and I'm going to type in the client last name start typing it in here and then I click the search button it brings up all the clients in my database with that particular last name I'm going to tell it to find events for that client there we go it shows it's got her senior portrait session there so we're going to go ahead and we click on that and I click link to studio cloud event so now it's what it's telling me is like all right there's already an invoice out there in studio cloud money that was collected for this particular job when we take a book a session over the phone we usually collect payments on it so I brought that money in it's telling me that a $250 payment by check was already made and so what I want to do is I want to be sure that I know that when I'm actually working with ProSelect so I'm going to tell it to link invoice and what it does is it brings that information into ProSelect. So now, if we go up here to the top, we can look and see. We can see how our album it tells us it's linked to Studio Cloud. So now I have an open communication between my Thompson job on ProSelect and Studio Cloud. So it really is just a, a, a seamless thing the way the two programs work together. Well, when I get into my presentation room and I'm starting to work with my clients, what I want to do is I want to start sorting the images down into uh, yes, no, and maybe. If you notice up in the top here, we've got our um, smiley faces. Uh, yes, maybe, no. I have 78 images that are in my maybe group. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on an image. And that's going to bring that image up to me full screen. I'm going to put my fingers on the keys 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to ask the client if it's a yes, a no, or a maybe. So what we're going to do is when we get ready to actually take and send that into a, a different group, all we have to do is tap one of those keys. So we bring up the image on the screen, the client looks at it, the client decides that they don't want that particular image, I tap the 3 key, it sent it to that in there and moved it to the next image. So now here I'm tapping a yes, a maybe a 2, and so you can see my numbers are now changing up in the upper left hand corner. You can see it's uh, as I'm moving these images into these yes maybe and no groups. Now I'm just kind of clicking through them right now but I'd have the client uh, go through and give me their opinion so we can talk about the images but this is what I find is the fastest way and it's very important that we stay in control of that sales presentation. Alright let's click on our yes group go back to our thumbnail view and that shows all the images that we have in the particular yes group. Obviously we didn't go through all the images. I want to compare images I can click on one, hold my shift or command or control key and click on the second one. If I want to zoom in an image all I have to do is right click on the point where I want to zoom. If I want to move the image around I hold my space bar and I can drag it. I can move that image by dragging around. Click the minus sign in the corner and it sends it back to the full cropped image there. If I want to zoom both images I hold my shift key and right click and that zooms all the images on my screen. I can actually have up to 30 images at a time on the screen. If I hold my shift key and my space bar, I can drag around all those images at one time. So if I had a family portrait, I could go from person to person to person and be able to evaluate the image. When I decide that if I want to get rid of one of the images, all I have to do is click on it, and then I can simply tap my one, two, or three key, and that will send that into a different group. So my editing becomes very, very quick.
We can also compare images very easily. Let's go ahead and we're going to select a whole series of images here. We're going to just click a bunch. I held my shift key and then double click and that brings up that whole series of images there. We brought up 10 images up on the screen. Well, if we look up on the top, this is our compare image snapshot feature. It's telling me that I have 10 images. What it did, it recorded those 10 images um, so we can go back and recall them. If you want to go ahead and look at an image, all I have to do is double click on that image and that will bring that image up to full screen. If the client decides they don't like this image, all I've got to do is tap the 3 key and that will send that image into the No group. This moves us through to the next image that's in the sequence. Alright, let's go back to our thumbnail view and we're looking at our images here, but if you look up here at our compare image snapshot icon, I can click on that, it now has the 9 images. The icon is updated to 9 because we started out with 10 and we took 1 out of there. So it keeps constant track of what we're doing with our images. Let's go ahead and select another series here. I'm just doing control or command clicking multiple images. Then I double click with a selection and that brings up all of those images on the screen. You can see I have another compare image snapshot that's 7. If I want to get rid of any of the images here, we can actually get rid of those images again by moving into the yes or maybe group or whichever group we want. And those compare image snapshots are always updating for me. All right, we're going to go through here. Let's select these black and white images. And we'll bring these all up on the screen. So now you can see that I've got a 9, a 6, and a 3 up here in my compare image snapshots. I can have up to five different image snapshots up there. And what it will do is once I go to my sixth one, it'll drop the oldest one away. Well, let's say that I want to make sure that one doesn't drop out of there. I can do what's called pinning. And I'm going to hold the option key while clicking on the little snapshot icon. You can see it now has gone from a dash line to a solid line. And that indicates that that one is actually pinned. You can see I now have my pin snapshot, so that one won't go out of the rotation. That will hold it as long as I have this Pro Select session, album session open. Let's go ahead and we're going to order an image here. So I'm going to select an image. I've just highlighted the one image. I click on it. You can see the gold border now appearing around that. We're going to go over to our shopping cart. So when I click on our shopping cart, we can now select the size. These are all of our different sizes. We've got it from our portrait price list. It automatically calculated the price for me based on my price settings in there. If I want to go through and I want to order any other images, we can go ahead and we can click any other images. I can also go through and I can do a quick order. I just selected all the images by using Ctrl or Command A. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm right clicking on my shopping cart. When I right click on the shopping cart here, what it does, it brings up what's called my quick order menu. We're going to go ahead and go to our 5x7s. And so when I go ahead and just mouse over the 5x7, and then I can tap my two key and that order two five by sevens of each one of these particular images. Let's go back to our thumbnail view and we're going to continue on some editing. All right, well, I want to go back and I can go back to any of my compare image snapshots. You can see how convenient that is to be able to go back and look at any of the different snapshots that we've actually created. Again, we can zoom in by right clicking, click the minus button, and that zooms it back. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to order a wall portrait of this one. So we're going to go ahead and order a 16 by 24. I'm going to right click and begin using my quick order menu. Go to the 16 by 24. We'll go back to our thumbnail view and we're going to continue on. So let's go here on this particular one. Client likes this image, a favorite image. Say, how's it going to look into a room? So we can just click on our working with rooms and now we can go down and we can select a room to work with. Once again, all we have to do is drag that image into the room and using the up and down arrow keys, I can size to see exactly how it's going to look. If you want to add a frame around the image, go ahead and select my frames. Then from there, we go ahead and we're just going to go to our shopping cart. We go to our shopping cart, it automatically adds the sizes in my room view, has my frame, shows my total, my payments. We've added it right into the invoice there. You can see how quick and easy ordering is in ProSelect. Now ProSelect is all about ordering prints, but what happens is that I think in today's market here, we're, we're almost forced to be able to take and offer some type of digital files out there, and ProSelect can handle that too. Well, what I want to do is I want to actually show you how we can actually go through and we can order digital files in ProSelect too, have them appear in the invoice and actually manage all the licensing and, and rights for those particular images. Let's go up here, I'm going to go to Album, and we're going to go to sort images by and I'm going to go to ordered images. What that does is that forces all the images that have an order on them up to the front. You can see we've got the shopping cart. I'm going to select all those images. Now from here what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead I'm going to click on my custom effect actions. And what I've done is I actually created a Photoshop action that allows me to embed licensing data right into 
uh, my digital files. So what it is is I just click that action there and it's a particular file for it writes the metadata in. The metadata is something under file info in Photoshop. It puts a copyright information. You can customize all of this um, out there but it's just a simple action that embeds that data in there. And if we look here you can see that I had my action set up so it automatically duplicated the file. And so now you can see that we've got the new files there that they don't have a shopping cart icon. Them. Those are the ones that are now duplicated and they have that data involved and in, embedded in them. I'm going to go ahead and click our shopping cart. I'm going to go to digital file, small social media file. So that place in order you can see I now have a shopping cart on each one of those images there too. Now that I've got all the ordering done on this job, I want to go ahead and I want to go up my production. Now anymore, a lot of people are actually outsourcing all that production. In the 2016 version, we actually made that a whole lot simpler for you. So in this case, I'm going to go to production and I'm going to go down and click on export production package. Now what this allows you to do is to be able to take and send all of your original images and the order information right out to an outside retoucher. You select the folder where you want to go. You can tell it that I want to include the original ordered images, uh, that if, I'm, if I create an album or book I can have those. I want the raw files to go out there. I can take and include what's called a production format album which is only just the ordered images. It will be a pro select album and I can also tell it to remove all the customer details, prices and payments so your outside retoucher doesn't know who the client is or what the um, prices and everything are that you actually charge for. It's also got a production uh, production report that is built right into it there. And you go ahead and click export and it'll pop that whole thing right out into a uh, production package for you to send it to someone else to produce. Well, in most cases, people are actually producing their own images and, and it really isn't hard to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to production and we're going to go to produce high-res images. This is such a such a powerful thing in ProSelect. This shows me everything that's ready to go on the job. There's my 16 by 24 but notice how it's got a logo on there. The logo is right there um, in there that I've set it up in my preferences to be able to take and have logos actually applied on each one of my images. There's one of my social media files. You can see it says social media use and that's actually got a logo that's sized a little bit differently for me. Here's my 11 by 14. Well this 11 by 14 my default logo is actually a color logo, a gold logo. I want to change it to a black and white so I've got several logos loaded right into my system so I can simply go through and I can take and I can adjust the logo there. So here I can go through and we can change those. Let's go ahead and we can even select multiple um, ones all at one time and I can change the logos all at one time. And what's neat about this is that the logos are all going to change based on my preferences based on the size because the proportions are different. It works. It really is fabulous the way that the logos really work. All right, well what I want to do is it's time to go ahead and, and retouch the files. Now ProSelect this sets up a whole workflow for us. So when we're in the production module, what I want to do is after I've got all of my images, I'm going to go through the images one by one. I'm going to launch them out into Photoshop. Now at this point, I like to go back to my original RAW file. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click Open RAW in Photoshop. That opens up Adobe Camera RAW for me. If you want to use Lightroom, you can go into Lightroom too. Um, but I use having to use ACR. So I'm going to open it up and then bring that image into Photoshop. Now at this point, I'm going to go through and do my retouching on here. Now when I would do my retouch, I'm going to use, this is called the Ron Nichols Studio Retouching Palette. This is a, a palette that I actually um, created that takes you through a systematic approach to retouch. It's got video training in it. It looks like Photoshop Actions, but it's much, much more sophisticated than that. And so it takes you through the whole process of, of retouching. It times how long you're um, taking to retouch the file. You can move through it in a logical order. Um, so I encourage you to um, check out that Studio Retouching Palette. That's not a part of ProSelect, but it actually works uh, right directly with Photoshop. Well, what I want to do here for this one, I'm not going to take the time to retouch the file in this case. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to draw on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I just selected a brush here and we're just going to go ahead and draw an R on it for retouch. That way you can see the difference. I'm going to go over to my palette here. I'm going to tell it to um, save and flatten and save TIFF file. Just one double click and it'll go ahead and just close that. I held my command key and that automatically closed the file. The palette controls that. Notice how it didn't bring up any questions. My workflow is that I actually want to save a TIFF file on those. That's my, that's my workflow. That's how I know it's a retouch file. I'm not saving it's an uncompressed file, so it's going to give me. It's going to 
be the file that's going to get used to make my final JPEGs or get sent to the lab. So my process is I would step through each one of the images and go through and retouch it. Well, I want to go ahead and I'm going to reload um, this image. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to reload that image here. And you'll see now in my preview it's now updated. You can also look up in the upper left there. You can see how the other images there are now updated with that retouch file. Remember, yours wouldn't have an R on it, but this gives you the, the idea there. All right, so I would just step through the other images, launch them one at a time, and go into Photoshop and actually go through and do my retouching. Well, I'm not going to go through and retouch them all. I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to check all, and then what we can do is we're going to tell it to make high-resolution images. So what it's doing now is it's going through and it's going to process out the, the files for me. It's going to uh, make them, it's going to crop them the exact size, it's going to set them to my resolution, which is um, 300 ppi that I had set in my production preferences and um, get everything ready to apply all those logos, do any black and white conversions, Photoshop actions, anything, and make them ready uh, to send to the lab. Well, at this point, um, all of our files are done now, and so we can go through and we can take a look at them here. Now, these two by three files here are actually our social media files um, that we had. That was the, the resolution we had uh, set for a social media file. They're only going to be small uh, files there, so we can go ahead and we can take a look at those images there. So you can see that one. Notice how it's got the logo apply to it. See, grab that retouched image, the one that had the R on it there. And let's take a look at this image in Photoshop. So if I go out here and I go to File, and I go to File Info here, and we're going to go ahead and look down a little bit further here. You can see it's got a copyright notice in here, copyright 2016, all rights, authorized use for social media, logo cannot be cropped or removed, no print new images is authorized. Now this doesn't stop everything, but it does give you a legal basis to, to make sure that notification that all of your image information is in there. I also make sure that all of that would be a part of my license agreement that would be on my pro select invoice because that all can be in there. I would just select a social media use uh, selection in my invoice that, that prints out and I have the customer sign that too so they're seeing it in different fronts. Well let's take a look at some of the other files that we've got it here. If we go to the folder for our five by sevens here, you can see here's our black and white. Notice how that put the black and white logo on each one of those images. Remember how we changed that there. Our 11 by 14 um, that we ordered again all of these notice the information, the size information and the quantities. Notice the quantity of one, Q02 on the different files. It tells us exactly how many we need to order. All we need to do is go into our lab ordering system with Rose or whoever it may, whatever system your lab uses, and go ahead and order those files. As you can see, ProSelect really creates processes for us. It allows us to be able to take and easily show our images to our client add orders to the images. We can integrate it with our studio management software, bring information in and out of Studio Cloud. We can apply our logos. We can get different. We can order prints. We can order gallery wraps. We can order framed images. We can create and sell digital files. All of it can be handled very, very easily through ProSelect. Then we get to the back end with ProSelect Pro Production. We're able to take and manage all of our workflow. It puts it into a process for us. It makes it so, so systematic to be able to take and efficient for creating our final images. I'm not going to kid you, you're going to learn all this overnight, but there's so many resources that are available for ProSelect and the best part about it, you can do it in baby steps. Start using ProSelect right away and you're going to start making money. You'll start making more money when you start using in-person sales and showing your images using ProSelect. Then as you grow with ProSelect, you can start integrating all the different advanced features to be able to really smooth out your workflow.